Hello my dear students, welcome to your Geographies online class. In today's class, we will be discussing about soil and their formation. This is a section of chapter 4 as weathering and soil formation. Soil is a loose material that covers up the outermost part of the earth's crust or the earth surface we see is mostly covered by these loose materials and to that loose materials we call it soil. The soil is composed of organic and inorganic matters. The organic matters are mostly the dead remains of plants and animals and addition of that organic matters in the soil is known as humus. Weathering as a process as already discussed in an earlier chapter facilitates in the formation of soil as we understood that weathering in a previous class is breaking up of rocks and these rocks when they break they are transported from one place to another or these broken materials or fragments remains in the place where the rock breaks so those soils that have been formed with the broken materials of the rocks or broken rocks and are transported from one place to another they are known as transported soil while those they form on the place where soil uh, where rock breaks are known as residual soil now let us discuss the factors controlling soil formation in this the first factor let's consider it, nature of the parent rock The first factor, nature of the parent rock, here what we understand is the soil that has been formed may be of various types, they are not of the same type and this soil is mostly formed by the weathering of rocks. Now the rocks which breaks and forms the soil acts as the parent material to the formation of soil. So the type of rock determines the type of soil. For example, if it is mostly with igneous rocks that breaks and basaltic type of igneous rocks that breaks, the soil type formed is mostly black in color. So such soils has its parent material or its origin source becomes the igneous rocks. So that is what we call nature of the parent rock. The second factor that facilitates the formation of soil is climate. Now climate of two uh, acts as a very important element in formation of soil because it facilitates weathering that is breaking of rocks and two important elements that is temperature and precipitation determines by large the formation of the soil or the soil type. With more humid conditions and more rainfall in a place it is always seen that the soil is much more wet and has more water in it, water retention in it that also leads to the growth of plants. The climatic factor also determines the biological and chemical reactions that takes place in the soil and also determines the amount of humus contained in soil. The third factor that determines the formation of soil is relief. When we say relief or the slopes, we always try to mean or understand the hilly regions because they have slopes either steep or gentler. In steep slopes, there is very less formation of soil as because owing to the gravity, most of the sediments that are deposited in a steep slope, they slide down the slope and there is no much formation of soil in steep slopes. While in a gentler slope, there is much deposition of sediments that leads to the formation of soil. 
The last and the fourth factor that determines the formation of soil is time. Time plays a very important role as because when we see with the breaking of rocks or when we see with the formation of soil, it does not happen in a short span of time. And soil formation does not happen instantly. It takes a longer time period for the formation of soil or for the sediments to be deposited in a soil. So class, this is for the day. We will be discussing further about the chapter in our next class. Thank you and you all have a good time.